Welcome to Out the Box by Gymbox. My name is Sophia and I'm here today at Citizen M Rooftop Bar Cloud M. This is just one class that is available in Citizen M hotel rooms around the globe. All right guys, all you need to do for this class is just find space in your room and let's get started. We're gonna start with a nice and easy body weight warm up. So you're gonna start bouncing on a spot. If you don't wanna bounce, you can also start doing some leg curls. Whenever you're ready, we're gonna interlace the fingers and we're gonna take five wrist rolls each direction. Good. Excellent. When you're ready, heels up to the bump, chest up, back straight. And again, your alternative is to do leg curls if you would like to take a lower, Im uh, lower impact option. Brilliant. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Extend the arms into a T position, squeeze, release the palms. Alternatively, just walking on a spot. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, Two, one, all the way up, ribs and core tight. Keep squeezing, releasing the hands. Five, four, three, two, one, all the way over the head. Beautiful, five, four, three, two, one. Let's take those jumping jacks, nice and easy. Chest out, breathe. Alternative, nice little step, reaching with the arms over the head. Let's go. Eight, seven, six, five, four, Three, two, and one. Beautiful. Twisting the hips, chest up, relax your shoulders. And we're gonna repeat the routine one more time. Interlace the fingers, bouncing on a spot, jogging on a spot, whatever you like. Five wrist circles, each direction. Brilliant. And whenever you're ready, heels up to the bum. Alternative is just a leg curl. And we take shoulder rolls as well. Five circles each. And change. Beautiful. Back into a T position. Marching or bouncing. Palms up to the ceiling, ribs in. Squeeze, release the hands. Five, four, three, two, one. And up. Five, four, three, Two, one, all the way over the head, ribs in. And again, if you need to, just walk on a spot. Three, two, one. This time we take a different jack variation. So you wanna bring the arms in front to open up the shoulder. Your alternative is a little step all the way to the side. Ribs in, core tight, breathe. Five, four, three, two, and one. Bounce it out. We're gonna repeat our jumping jacks one more time. Different variation. And then we're gonna move on into our mobility routine. Three, two, one. This time we go pull downs. Pull downs. Again, your alternative is to pull your elbows and a little step. Otherwise, jack and pull down. So here, reaching with the arms over the head, staying light on the balls of your feet core engaged and pulling the elbows towards the ribs. Five, four, three, two, and one. Brilliant work, shake it off. We're moving into our full body mobility routine. So now we're gonna take our neck rolls. Starting nice and tall, standing tall, core in, ribs in. Stance up to your hip distance apart or slightly wider, relax your arms and take your neck rolls five. Four, three, two, and one. Change it over to the other side. One, two, three, four, and five. Amazing work, team. We're moving into shoulder rolls. Once again, standing tall, ribs and squeeze your bum, grip the mat, the floor, wherever you're standing. With your toes, lift the kneecaps. We'll bring the shoulders forward, up. Pinch the shoulders and down. Five, four, three, two, one. And change forward. Squeeze back, up and forward. Three, two, 
and one brilliant work we move on to controlled articular rotation so again standing nice and tall ribs in relax your shoulder from here squeeze the fingers together elbow straight bicep up to the ceiling we lead with the hands to the midline of the body engage the front of your shoulder and your chest and your pec now bring the arm over the head bicep to the ear flip the palm and then we lead lead back stretch your chest as soon as you're halfway down internal rotation touch your side with the back of the hand lead back reverse and back so the goal here is to isolate that shoulder joint and keep the shoulder down go with control nice and slow we're working that mobility of the shoulder before we go into our main workouts brilliant the goal here is to move with control keep your elbow straight and don't raise the shoulder up to the ear now we'll do the other side remember to engage the chest the shoulder bicep to the ear flip the palm keep your core tight back straight look forward now halfway down rotate the thumb in touch your hip lead back and reverse then we'll do two more in heading the arm up arm out to the side down and one more time staying tall shoulder down so don't allow the shoulder to shrug up flip the palm if your elbows are bending maybe you need to bring the arm slightly away from the face keep that elbow straight brilliant we're gonna move on into hip mobility so i would like you to open your stance into a straddle toes turn out from here we're gonna take a hinge side hinge forward side and back five hip circles Keep your knees extended, squeeze your quads, core engaged. Once you finish five circles, take it to the other side. Good. Now from here, we're gonna lunge into it. So you're gonna bend the knee, make sure the knee does not go over the toes and reach and twist. Beautiful, three more each. Excellent. Now, same exercise. We're going to hinge from the hips so your back will be straight. Toes turn out, lift the kneecap, squeeze your quads. Inhale, hinge, back straight. Now, reach straight leg windmills. Five. Twist, look up. Four. Three. Two. And one. Beautiful. From here, we're gonna toe heel, toe heel, toe heel until we find a hip distance apart stance. We're gonna take now single control rotations for our hips. Press with the toes, grip the mat, lift the kneecaps, kneecap on the standing leg, squeeze your bum. Arms into a T, you can also hold on to something. We're gonna bring the knee up in line with the hip. We're gonna knee out to the side. Rotate so the inner thigh is facing the floor and bring it back. So only three reps here, knee up, find a balance try not to shift your body to the side and keep yourself tall good nice one and when you're ready swap over so keep that balance make sure your toes are not turned out to the side nice and strong on the bottom leg and here we're working on our hip mobility open the leg to the side rotate the inner thigh down and bring it back to center good excellent our next exercise will be a hamstring walkout so simply like you would do a basic hamstring stretch you're going to hinge from the hip one knee bends the leg that you're stretching will be nice and straight and we're going to sweep the arms for five four three two and one brilliant switch side same thing toes up hinge from the hip knees straight we're going to get into that hamstring and the hip and sweep the arms one two three four and five brilliant now a little mobility challenge so what we're gonna do now we're gonna do the same stretch fingertips to the temple now with the elbow we're gonna try to reach down to the toes don't worry if you struggle it is fine if you're not used to practicing but it's a really fun um, mobility drill so you're gonna be reaching with the elbow towards your big toe. So again, if you need to soften that knee, you can. 
and just pulse. Even if you're here, that's fine. If you can, see if you can reach down. About five pulses or five reaches. And then switch. Don't forget to breathe. Brilliant. Amazing. We'll do one more exercise that will be completing our mobility routine and that's also going to become an activation. So you're going to really feel those muscles work. So standing nice and tall, we're going to bring the knee up in line with the hip. Find a balance and then stretch the leg out. If you struggle to keep the leg up, you can lower your ankle down or if you can, keep the leg straight and hold it 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, chest up, 5, four, three, two, and one. Brilliant. Let's swap over, shake it off if you need it. And again, pressing down. So make sure you're connecting firmly with the floor through your toes. So grip the floor, lift the kneecap, squeeze the bum, lift the knee up and extend the leg and we hold. Squeeze your quad. 10, nine, eight, seven, chest up, six, five, four, three, two, and one, brilliant. Shake it off. Now the next exercise we're gonna do is gonna be like a single leg deadlift and also this movement will help you teach your body how to build a strength or also the confidence to kick up into a handstand, although we're not kicking up into a handstand, but that's what we're gonna do. We're standing nice and tall in a kind of a split stance, like you would go for a lunge, for example. From here, we're gonna hinge from the hip, bend the knee and take the leg off. So it's your single leg deadlift. If you want to make it more challenging, try to extend the bottom knee, keep the spine straight, point the toe. Five, hold it, four, hands could go anywhere. Three, two, and one. Gently lower yourself back down to center and switch side. Beautiful, so standing nice and tall, we're gonna hinge at the hip first. Start with a bent knee, press down into the floor, lift your leg. Point it so, and then if you want that extra challenge by extending the knee, the exercise will become more challenging. Five, four, three, two, and one. Beautiful, brilliant. Okay, let's repeat these exercises one more time and then we're gonna go into some more fun drills. Okay, so firstly, let's start in a split stance. We're gonna kick up the front leg up. Beautiful. Now we're gonna lean and try to kick up the back leg. One more time, back straight, arms out to the side, kick the leg up, point the toe. Now we lean forward, kick the back leg. One more time, back straight, open, arms into a T, kick the leg up as high as you can, lean, kick the back leg. Brilliant, now let's swap over. So again, split stance. So obviously your feet are like on train tracks. So if you would lunge, you'll be able to lunge in this stance. And from here, back straight, press with the toes into the ground, lift one leg up and lean forward, kick the back leg. Beautiful, up, lean forward, kick the back leg. One more time. Brilliant. Okay, we're gonna start going to the floor. Now we're gonna look at upper body strength. We're gonna start with simple walkouts. So first you're gonna hinge from the hip. So hinge means that you're not gonna straight away start to bend the knees, but you're gonna hinge until your torso is parallel to the floor. Soften the knees, place your hands onto the floor, come into your plank position, squeeze your bum, don't allow the hips to sink. And then come back up. And now we're gonna go for 30 seconds up and down. High plank position, push the floor away, external rotation of the upper arm. Make sure the shoulders are not shrugging up to the ears. And again, if you find you're struggling to hip hinge, hinge, bend the knees, and then bring the hands down. Or if you're comfortable to go hinge, fingertips down, palms down, go into a simple plank. Now, as we're going through these drills, we're gonna be adding on more elements to our walkout. Brilliant. Now, whenever you're ready, let's come to that plank position. We add a pike up. So reach with the hips up, shoulders away from the ears. Come back to your plank 
and then back up. And that's what we're doing for 30 seconds. If you would like to add a little progression, a very easy one, reach towards your opposite ankle or shin or knee. Now we're just gonna go here for another 10 seconds with this drill. Simply just lifting the hips up or reaching and reaching. Excellent, let's do one more time. Same thing, plank, pike up, pike up. Good. Now we're gonna do the same exercise, but we're gonna add a scapular push-up. So let's try first the scapular push-up. I'm gonna demonstrate, break it down for you, and then we're gonna do this routine one more time. So you're gonna come into a plank position first after your walkouts. What's a scapular push-up? Basically, protraction and retraction of your scapula. So you're moving the shoulder blade. So as you push away, shoulder blades separate, shoulders down. As you pull your chest down towards the floor, you retract, bring the shoulder blades together and separate. Okay, so that's your scapula push-up position. Place the hands under the shoulders, screw the palms into the floor. If you struggle and you find that your elbows are bending on this exercise, come down into the knees, squeeze your glutes in your inner thighs, and then from there, bring the shoulder blades together and push away. Bring the shoulder blades together and push away. And again, if you like, you can go into your full plank. Okay. So hopefully this makes sense. Let's go for the last round of our walkouts. So you're gonna walk it out into your plank position. Simple pike up, scapula push up on the knees, or you can go a little bit more, a little bit harder. If you like, reach one, plank, reach two, good. And then from there, scapula push up and back up. Brilliant. And again, plank, hips up, reach, reach, scapula push up, and back. All right, let's do one more time, last one. Walk it out, plank, court side, reach one, reach two, and then scapula push up. Excellent, I would like you to stay on the floor for now. So let's go ahead and again, move our wrists a little bit. So I want you to use your hand, you can use the middle finger and your thumb to secure the wrist and you take five circles, isolated. Good, and let's change. And the other way, good. Excellent. We're gonna start going again into scapular push-ups, into hand release press-ups. So every single drill we're gonna do now is gonna be a little bit of strength and conditioning before we head to practice the fun part of this class, which is skills that we're gonna do. So, we're gonna start with a scapular push-up into a hand release press-up. So, you can start on your knees. Bring the shoulder blades together, separate, and now gently bending the elbows, pull your chest towards the floor. When you arrive to the floor, try not to relax your muscles. Keep tension in your core and your glutes, palms off, and then as you start to push yourself away from the ground, you're gonna push and separate the shoulder blades. Yeah, let's give it a go, 30 seconds. If you can do a full option, you go scapula push up, hand release, palms up and back up. Shoulder blades together and down, palms up. Nice and easy. Squeeze, release. Make sure you're not arching at the back, so you wanna have a hollow body shape. Brilliant. Keep going. Let's do one more rep. Beautiful. Whenever you're ready, meet me on the floor. We're gonna go for Superman. So firstly, we're just gonna focus on lifting our chest and keep our thighs on the floor. And then we're gonna go for the opposite. So make sure that you're not sensing your neck. Bring the fingertips to the temple, look down, or if you wanna make it more challenging, Extend the arms into your wide position, thumbs up. 30 seconds. We just lift the chest. And let's go. So this is your option one. Try not to lift your toes and try not to crunch at the neck. So long neck, looking down. Or option two, arms here in a wide position. Shoulders can come up to the ears and you lift. And you lift. And just another 15 seconds. 
of any variation. Make sure you're squeezing your glutes, make sure the hips are on the ground and engage your shoulders. Good job. 10 seconds recovery and I will demonstrate you the next exercise. So again, you can place one hand on top of the other. Create a little support for your forehead. Rest your forehead down. Open your legs into a straddle position. Extend the knees and just lift your thighs up as high as you can. We're gonna go in three, two, one. Let's go, lift and lift. If you don't wanna rest your um, forehead down, you can also just stay here and look forward. Or rest your forehead down and lifting up. Squeezing the glutes, trying not to bend the knees. If it's very challenging, the wider the position of your legs, the easier it will be. The more narrow position of your thighs, the harder it will be this exercise. The more challenging it will become. And take a break. Now, lastly, we're gonna go for the full Superman or a straight body line drill. It's whatever name you like. So option one, fingertips to the temple, nice and classic, lifting up here and down. So we're trying to fire up the whole posterior chain in this exercise. So not just the lower back is working, but really your glutes, hamstrings, rhomboids, rear delts, everything is working. Or you can go straight line and just lifting here. So the goal is not how much you back bend, the goal is how well can you engage your muscles. And let's go, exhaling up, inhaling down. Again, if you find the straight body line drill, which I'm doing right now, is challenging, you can always come to this option. Beautiful. Lifting all the way up. Good, excellent. Let's change over. So now we're gonna go into another very classic gymnastic drill, which is called the hollow body. We're gonna start together, firstly, by setting up the position of our pelvis. So it's really important with any core exercise to avoid an anterior pelvic tilt. If you're arching your back and there's a gap between the floor, no matter what exercise you do, a crunch, a plank, you wanna make sure that you have a posterior pelvic tilt. So you tuck your tailbone under and press your spine to the ground. You can hold this option nice and easy, working on pressing the lower back into the ground. You can also go for the full option. If this is too much, the higher the legs, the easier the exercise will be. We're gonna hold it for another 20 seconds. In three, two, one. Hold it, option one, option two, or easier option. If you also want to support your neck, you can cross your hands, interlace the fingers, place the hands at the back and hold it there. Trying to work on pressing the spine into the ground, squeezing your inner thighs, point the toes and hold it there for me. For another five, four, three, two, and one. Brilliant. Now we're gonna do the same, but another challenging one. You might struggle to balance on this one if you're not used to it. You might find this exercise very new, but again, it's same concept. You're gonna be on the side of your body. So imagine you're gonna be doing a side crunch. Yeah, so it's the same hollow body shape, but you're gonna be balancing on a side of your body. And we're gonna hold this for 20 seconds. So extend that arm, stretch. You can even press with the palm down, lift the shoulder and crunch your side, pull the belly in. Try not to roll onto your back. And if you're very strong, you can take the hands off and just balance there. So that's working your obliques, that's working your core, inner thighs, and keep lifting that shoulder up. Five, four, three, two, and one. Brilliant. Let's switch sides. I'm gonna give you a generous 10 seconds to change and also take a little break. Three, two, one, let's go. So again, stretching the arm in line with your shoulder, lifting your shoulder off, squeezing the thighs and finding that balance. Hold it there, crunching the side of the body. Again, we're striking those obliques, inner thighs, we're working on that balance. And three, two, 
one, brilliant, well done. We change side again, this time we're doing a side plank dip. So again, we're gonna strengthen not only our core, but our shoulders and our legs. So really it's like a full body exercise, although you think about planks as a core exercise, which is correct. But with this variation, you're gonna work your shoulders as well. Hand placement is up to you, fingertips sideways, um, or they can also face away, as long as you feel stable. Make sure the wrist and the shoulder are in line and make sure you're pushing the floor away. Strong arm. Now from here, you're gonna place one leg on top of the other. You're gonna bring your hip down to the floor and lift. Now, if this is a little bit too much, you can bring one knee down onto the floor, bring your hip down and then lift up here, yeah? So let's just simply do eight repetitions. And again, if this is too much for your wrist, you can always come down onto your forearm and bring the hip down and up, yeah? Let's go ahead, try eight reps. Three, two, one. We inhale down and exhale, squeeze. Tug the pelvis under, all the way, eight reps. Inhaling down, exhaling up. Good. And change side, brilliant, well done. So again, remember, if you need to modify, you can always do this option. You can even rest the foot down, drop the hip and send the hip forward. Try not to stick the butt out. Again, posterior tilt, send the hip forward. And we're going for eight repetitions, whichever variation is suitable for you. And let's go. Down up eight, seven, big squeeze, six, five, four, three, two, one. Lovely. We come back into a seat position. We're gonna now go for reverse plank variations. Again, these are great to strengthen your shoulders, your tricep, and build that straight arm strength for the future skills such as uh, tug hold, L-sit, um, handstand, box stand, they're all connected. So, we're gonna squeeze the thighs together. We're gonna start like in a glute, glute bridge position, but we're gonna be balancing on our hands. Retract the scapula, drive the shoulder blades back and down, Push the ground away and lift your hips up for eight, seven, all the way up. So you're trying to find that straight line between your hip and the knee, pressing down with the toes. And again, we're trying to engage the inner thighs here. So you're trying to squeeze your knees together and fire up your deep core muscles as well. Brilliant. Now our next progression will be a reverse plank lift. We're not gonna hold it, but we're gonna aim to lift our hips as high as we can, but try not to think about back bending. Here we wanna create that tuck position. So we wanna think about crunching and engaging the abs. So we, rather than flaring the ribs out, you want to keep your ribs in. Hands sideways or forward, squeeze the thighs. And again, if this option is too much, you repeat the, um, Previous option. Three, two, one. Pull the toes down, lift, and down. One, two, three, four, five. Good. Six, seven, eight. Lovely. Brilliant. Okay, coming back into seat position now. Another classic gymnastic exercise is going to build your strength in your hip flexors and your quads uh, and help you perform or learn one day to do a full L sit. So, and this will also help you to kick up into your handstand. So we're going to point the toes, squeeze our thighs. Now, if you find that you're rounding at the lower back, you might want to find something you can lean your back against so your back is straight, or sometimes you can sit on something to make yourself feel more comfortable. Now from here, you can keep the hands either by your sides and just lift the leg up, or you can bring the hands in front. The more you lean forward, the more challenging it will be to lift your heel off the ground. Yes, yeah, so we're increasing that leverage. So shoulders back and down. Now you have a little protraction of the scapula, so rather than squeezing the shoulders, 
you will round the back and also you'll think about a little bit of more of a posterior tilt. So you're trying to pull the belly button to the spine and we lift the leg. Six, five, four, three, two, and one. Brilliant. Switching side. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Brilliant. Shake it off. Now, obviously, single legs are not as bad, but let's give it a go. Let's challenge ourselves and try to lift both legs at a time. Now, if you really think, um, not think, but if you feel like your thighs are cramping up, that is absolutely normal. The more you practice these movements, the easier it gets over time. So expect it to be consistent if you want this exercise to become, to feel easy. So squeeze the thighs if you struggle. Simply just try to lift the heels off and contract the front, the top of the thigh, your quad muscle. And go, one, two, three, four, five, and six. Brilliant, shake it off. Okay, another variation, one of my favorites. We're gonna come into a straddle position. So you're gonna open your legs a little bit wider. You can massage the thighs if you like. Now, once again, same concept. If you find like you're falling backwards, try to lean into something so your back is supported and your back is nice and straight. Otherwise, try to put something under your bum. Excellent. And then we're gonna turn the kneecaps out. So rather than making the knees fall in, wanna engage your glutes, turn the knee out, extend the legs, back nice and straight. Now we're gonna repeat the leg raises, but before that, we're just gonna pull our chest to the thigh. So what happens when we're tight in the hips or the lower back, your butt cheek comes off the ground. We don't want that. Glue your bum to the ground, twist your torso, place the hands in front of your hip, and then gently pull your chest towards the thigh. Yeah? So again, if you can't reach, that's fine. Just a little reach. And also, rather than rounding the spine, I want you to squeeze the shoulder blades and pull, pull, pull your ribs and your belly towards the thigh, but your collarbone is up, proud chest. And then let's try a couple of reps on the other side. So by keeping your glutes and thighs glued to the ground, you should feel a little stretch also in your lower back if you're tight. If you're quite flexible, feel free to go all the way. Good, excellent. And the last one, we're gonna be pulling ourselves towards the ground. So again, we're in a straddle position here. We go a little bit wider. Now bring the fingertips in front, inhale around the spine. And as you exhale, pull the shoulder blades together and pull the belly button to the ground, entering an anterior tilt. So you're sticking that tailbone out. And again, we inhale around and exhale, walk the hands forward. Try not to round the spine because this is not gonna help your hips to get and open a bit more. Let's go again, inhale, inhale round and exhale. And eventually with this drill, you will be able to come into a full pancake. Obviously, if you're not used to practicing this on a regular basis, this will take you a little bit of time together. But this is a really, really good drill that's gonna help you work on stretching the inner thighs, and helping you get more flexible. All right, let's go into the drills now. So our legs are nice and stretched out. Time to strengthen them. So same concept, leg raises, but in a straddle position. Again, make sure the knee's not turning in. External rotation, so you can even grab your hands and readjust so the knee is out. Squeeze the thigh, point the toe. If you struggle, you can just Relax and tense, relax and tense the muscle. You want to tense your quad and your butt cheek. And we lift again, one, two, three, four, five, six, good, switch sides. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, it wouldn't be me if I wouldn't give you even a more challenging variation, so, um, either just lifting the heels and engaging the legs both at the same time or lifting, piking up both legs. So for this, you need to round again at the upper back, shoulders down, belly button to the spine, squeeze your thighs before you lift. And then we go here. One, two, 
three, four, five, and six. Again, if you are just here, that is absolutely fine. I wasn't born like this. I worked really hard on these drills to be able to do them. So if I could do it, you can do it. All right, let's move on. So now from here, we're gonna practice more core exercises. You're gonna come into a comfortable seat position. You're gonna hug the knees to the chest, shoulders back and down. And from there, you're gonna lean back, find balance, and then keep the knees bent. But what tends to happen, we tend to kind of round. So if you're there, come back, open the chest, collarbone forward, shoulders down. You can even have the fingertips on the floor to make sure that you are working with good posture. Otherwise, bring the legs into a tuck or straight away extend the legs and hold. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, good, 3, 2, and one, beautiful. Bring your legs down, give them a nice little shake, give them a little quick stretch. Again, you can just stay here if you feel a stretch already. If you're quite flexible, you can grab your ankles or your toes and move forwards up to you, as long as you feel a good stretch in the back of the thigh. Lovely. Okay, let's start moving closer and closer to some more gymnastic skills. So the next exercise we're gonna do, we're gonna try to work a tuck hold. So a tuck hold would be performed either hanging off a bar with the knees in or using parallettes to balance. We are gonna do this on the floor and we're gonna mimic the full tuck hold. So again, we're here, bring the knees as close as you can to the chest, toes are up, bring the hands in front of the hips, external rotation. You can just press into the ground and just hold this position or try to put your bum of the floor and just hold that. Even if it's a couple of inches of the floor, trust me, you will feel your core, you will feel your hips, you will feel your shoulders. Don't forget to breathe when performing this movement. We're gonna hold for 10 counts. Set yourself up, even if you're just here, push into the floor and imagine that you're lifting off the ground. Three, two, one, we hold 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Brilliant. Stretch the legs out, give them a nice little shake. So again, another exercise that you can practice to build up your L-sits. I'm gonna demonstrate if you're not sure what an L-sit is. So bring the hands in front of the hips, external rotation, and then from there, you lift your legs and you balance. Obviously, it's easier when you are using a chair, when you're balancing on uh, parallettes or on gymnastic rings, but again, this could be trained also without any equipment. This is great, right? So. What we're gonna do, we're gonna do a similar option, but we're gonna only lift our bum and keep the heels on the floor. So squeeze your thighs together, bring the hands in front of your hips, screw the palms into the ground, rotate your bicep forward and push the ground away, create the gap between your ear and your shoulder. Breathe in and as you breathe out, lift your bum and just hold it there. And if you feel like you can kick your legs up, you can kick up your legs. Five, four, three, Wow, good job, shake it off. Lovely, so that was a little introduction how to practice the L-sit and all these exercises are great tools to build up that strength. Not just specifically for the L-sit, for any other gymnastic skills such as a pistol squat that we might look at next time. But yeah, pistol squat, handstand, we all need strength in the hips flexibility in the hamstrings and also a lot of core strength. It's not just the arms. All right, guys, let's move on to our next one. So now a little bit more fun. We're gonna roll on our backs. So I'm gonna demonstrate a few options. You're gonna round your spine, knees apart, roll, come to seat. That's option one. Option two, roll, come into a squat. Option three, roll, come into a standing position. Option four, you roll, and you add a little jump. Yeah, and we would like you to practice about five of these. If you're not comfortable to roll on your back for any reason, you can simply just hold this and you can just do some tucks as an alternative. But hopefully we can jump and roll. Five reps. Mm 
Nice. Good, once we finish, now we're gonna do a very simple butt fun move. Anyone can do it. It's a shoulder stand, okay? So we're gonna invert, and it's not a full handstand, but again, for, to, for us to get the feel, how it feels to be upside down, okay? So you're gonna come onto your back into a glute bridge position. You're gonna bring both legs up into a straight line, hip and knee and ankle in line. Now from here, press with the hands into the ground, kick your legs up, catch your lower back, and then from there, try to bring your elbows a little bit tighter, extend the legs, try not to move your um, neck, keep looking up, and try to hold your shoulder stand. Now in gymnastics, they also do this variation without supporting the back. So if you find that your core is strong, you can try to take the hands off and try to come to a straight line. They also can call this a candlestick. To come down, slowly bend the knees, hands on the floor, and roll down one vertebra at a time. Now, a more advanced variation, if you would like to give it a go, would be to have the hands over the head. So you can come here, roll, hips up, and back up. So really, I want us to combine these two exercises. They would start standing, easier option you roll kick the legs up as far as you can roll come up yeah otherwise the full variation would be to go from here into a stick into a jump yeah nice and easy so give it a go try five repetitions have fun again if you cannot roll on your back you can simply just stay in your shoulder stand and again, you can practice some straddles, some splits, some shapes with your legs. Just have fun. You got another 15 seconds to finish your repetitions. And then we're gonna move on into more fun exercises or fun skills. Give me another five seconds. Just do your best, have fun, whichever option you're practicing. And let's move on. We're gonna look at the pipe press up, the frog stand, headstand, and then we're gonna practice a little transition, a little exercise um, that will transition into a handstand. So, we're gonna start in a pike position. So again, the closer the feet to your hands, the more challenging this exercise will be. The more distance, the easier, the more manageable the exercise will be. So find where you feel comfortable, screw the hands into the ground, elbow pits forward, and then from there you're gonna bend the elbows and crown of the head or the top of the head is coming over the hands. Balancing on the toes, so you're transitioning the weight from the ball of the foot onto the toes, and then forward. Try not to flare the elbows and try to create a, like a tripod, almost like you're gonna do a headstand. So the head comes over forward. Keep your hips up. Once you complete five reps, take a little break, shake it off. And now we're gonna quickly look at the frog stand. So a frog stand is an arm balance. And again, it's a really nice introduction, uh, introductory move to building up again uh, skills towards handstands. And in general, it's a quite a fun move. So you will start in a squat position and you're gonna place your knee kind of above the elbow or on the elbow. I would suggest or above the elbow would be nicer and it's kind of the inner thigh. So on your tricep, hands are shoulder distance apart, flex your fingertips. From there, simply if you're new to this exercise, what I want you to do is bend the elbows and start shifting the weight forward and back. If you are experienced, if you try this move before, bend the elbows, lean forward, and then try to take one toe, other toe. If you find that you've already been practicing this before, you're familiar with this movement, you're gonna start leaning forward, take your toes off the floor, bend the elbows, and just balance. Enjoy. Looking forward, pushing the floor away. And again, remember, you're using your fingertips balance here so you want to move your fingertips the same like walking or balancing on one foot we use our toes to keep that balance so you have another 10 seconds 
to try and hold or practice your frog stance. If you want a more advanced option, you can place your knees higher, the arm almost into your armpit, bend the arms and then hold more of advanced frog option. Good. All right. We're almost done, team. The most, the best things are for dessert for the end of the class. So we have a headstand. If you're not comfortable with the headstand, find something you can lean your feet against. Otherwise, again, if you don't want to do that, you can do a very, very safe option as well. So we're going to place the hands shoulder distance apart. And remember, we're going to place the top of the head onto the floor. We're going to use the middle finger and the palm to measure that distance. Okay, great. Screw the palms into the floor. Start like with a pike push-up. Place your head onto the floor. Come into your pike. Now, if this is enough for you and you find, oh my God, what am I doing? That's fine. You can stay in this pike up position. You can even start to transition the weight from your feet into the toes. Now, remember with the headstand, handstand, frog stand, you are using your tricep, your shoulder, your core, your lats, your arms to balance. So don't put all the weight in onto your head. Now, obviously, if you feel more comfortable, you walk the feet as close as you can and place your knees onto your tricep and hold it there. Now, if you find that that's easy, you can try to move one leg away and try to extend it. Now, if you find it, oh, I've been doing headstands forever since I was a kid. Fine, bring the knees together and come into a straight line, find a balance. Now, if you're someone who likes to play upside down, you can create little shapes. You can go for straddles and you can do whatever you like as long as you're using your arms and your core is engaged. When you're ready, place the knees onto your triceps and then place yourself all the way and gently come out. Okay, our last exercise and we will be done. We're gonna practice some bunny hops. So if you're not confident to do a handstand, this is a really great exercise to build any, anyone's kind of build up the beginners or kind of work on strengthening and yeah, really fighting your fears. So it's a really fun one. You come onto all fours, you just kick the heels up. If you're a little bit stronger, if you're more comfortable, you can again, kick a little bit higher. Yeah. And eventually, once you get more comfortable with the bunny hops, you can start to hand balance. Yeah. So again, you can just have fun. Just jump like so. And that's it. Again, you're already transitioning into an inversion. So that's your first step. Otherwise, if you already practiced something similar before, you can jump a little bit higher, try to find a balance, push the floor away, hands shoulder distance apart, find balance. You have another 10 seconds and we'll be done. So enjoy, have fun, play. You have another eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Beautiful. Thank you so much for joining this workout. I hope you had fun. Let's just simply quickly stretch our forearms and our session will be complete. I really hope you had fun, you enjoyed and learned something new. Brilliant, so make sure you stretch both forearms. Let's take a full body stretch, bend the knees, sweep the arms up, reaching up tall and exhale. Let it go one more time. And that's time. Thank you for joining gymnastic conditioning class. You'll find the full out the box series exclusively in Citizen M hotel rooms around the globe.